Hi, and welcome to Driving Theory UK. I'm Dorian from the channel where I help you pass your theory test and driving test, anything driving related theory wise, I'm here to help you. And welcome to the last and another question of the week. What I've decided to do is stop this segment because because some of you are still struggling with the theory test and there may be a lot of messages and comments, which I really appreciate. Um, and I do want to help as many of you pass as possible. So what I'm going to be doing from April 17th, I believe get Easter right the way. I'm also um, got a busy diary coming up for the next couple of weeks. So this is the last question of the week on the Monday. And then from the 17th onwards, I will be doing a live mock test every Monday. 50 question mock test live where you guys can come on, get your questions, answers, study with me, anything driving related, come on, ask it, I'll answer it live for you. So if you've got any issues, um, yeah, just turn up and we'll have a conversation live um, on YouTube. Um, so that's what I'm going to do for you guys and hopefully that will continue every Monday, um, diary um, um, related hopefully my diary allows me to keep doing it every Monday but I've got it penciled in for Monday the 17th so if you haven't um, subscribed hit the notification bell do that so when it's promoted you know it's definitely coming or put it in your diary now 17th every Monday I'm looking at five o'clock once I get in from work and then we do a live basically a live workshop for you guys to help as many of you pass your theory test because it's that time of year when um, colleges, unis are coming towards an end and everyone starts to think about the driving um, spring, summer, get ready for driving before they go back to college or uni. So um, it's going to be a busy time for the theory test centres and busy time for the driving test centres and I want you guys to pass first time. So yeah, I'm going to do that for you guys. But enough of me waffling on. It's supposed to be about question of the week. So before we go into that, as usual, let me explain. All the questions and answers are drawn from the Driving Test Success app, otherwise known the 4-in-1. This is the app I use in the classroom with my pupils. I get the most um, benefit and success out of it. Um, I will go on record again. I'm not saying that other apps are bad. It's just that I find them kind of clunky to faff around to get all your answers um, out of it as well. So like I said, and and this is based, to be honest, it's similar to the, um, the real test in the centre. The questions I will add, I keep saying it because I keep still seeing it in the comments below. The questions are worded differently. These are sample questions. Regardless of what app that you are going to use, they're sample questions. Think about it. The DVSA are not going to... That's my smartwatch going off. Um, the DVSA is not going to release the original questions because if they do that, you guys are going to sit down, memorise the questions, memorise the answers, and you're not taking the information in. You must remember you need to understand it to pass it, but it's not just about passing it. It's about using that information moving forward for your driving test. As much as you want to pass the theory test, remember you want to pass your driving test as well. And if your knowledge is weak, it's going to fall down on your driving lessons and your driving test. And you don't want to be parked up at the side of the road for 20, 25 minutes with your instructor explaining the theory. So when you've already done that, you want to drive. And that's what I do with my pupils. Jump in the car, we just drive. And then we discuss any errors that come up. One, partly because I taught them the theory anyway. And two, it's a lot more fun just driving and add the theory into the equation. But again, I'm waffling on. Let's get on to um, what we're here for. And the question for this week is motorways part two. As I mentioned in one of the previous lives doing the questions of the motorway, it's a massive section. I'm not doing the obvious questions that come up on a regular basis. I'm tackling the questions that are kind of, kind of obscure and don't come up too often and needs a bit more explanation behind it. Because normally on the driving lesson, you don't go on a motorway to cover that side. So it's literally all theory. And as I said, that needs to be strong um, for when that question, if the question comes up on the theory test live. So first question 
is your vehicle has broken down on a motorway in which direction should you walk to find the nearest emergency telephone and the answer to that is in the direction shown in the marker post there's lots of marker posts in between the sos phones now let me just add in a few more questions and answers with this if the question comes up how far apart are the sos phones they're a mile apart What's the furthest you're gonna to walk to an SOS phone is half a mile. So if you was unlucky and broke down in the middle of two phones, it's gonna be half a mile one way or the other, but you're going to walk in the direction of the marker post. It's got a phone symbol on it, and it's got the direction that you need to walk to get to the nearest phone. And it's got some numbers, which I'll call your location numbers. As I like to give you guys hints and tips, that is the full, questions and answers for your marker post. Contraflow, I will add, contraflow is going against the flow of traffic. So if you look at this sign and image, so let me just read the question for that, I've not read the question. Um, what should you do when you're going through a contraflow system on a motorway? So this is a contraflow, there's another contraflow symbol, which is blue. Um, and that's for main roads, but this is for the motorway. And as you can see with the black bit, the arrow's going on the wrong side, which is the other side of the dual carriageway. So you're going against the flow of traffic. And the answer to that question is going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, keep a good distance from the vehicle ahead. Sometimes they can ask you the question, what would you expect to see in a contraflow system? And it's going to be lower speed limits. As you can see, the speed limit has been lowered from 70 to 30. But in this case, the answer is keep a good distance from the vehicle ahead because cars are going to be a slow, a slowing down, it's going to be more congested. That's the reason why. Which vehicles are prohibited from using the motorway? When this question comes up, uh, most of my pupils would go for double-decker bus because they say they've never seen a double-decker bus on the motorway. Buses can do up to 60 miles an hour, so they're allowed to use it. It's going to be powered mobility scooters. The reason for that, or tractors is another one, sorry. Tractors and mobility scooters are the two options they give you that are not allowed to use the motorway because power mobility scooters are the disabled buggies, if you didn't know. And the top speed on those is about eight miles an hour and on the pavement it's about four miles an hour. And obviously, if they gave you the other option, which is the tractor, then um, obviously tractors can't go that far, so they're not allowed on the motorway. If tractors need to be transported, they will be on the back of a lorry. What should you do immediately after joining the motorway? So you're coming on to the motorway. And what you should do is stay in the left-hand lane. Let me just add as well, put some more meat on the bones. When you're driving on the motorway, you should always be staying left unless you are overtaken. So if the question comes up, who should be using the left-hand lane? It's everybody. But in this case, when you come on to the motorway from the slip road, you should be staying left unless you are overtaking someone. You're in the right-hand lane of a three-lane motorway. What does... What do these overhead signs mean? Now, if you look at the image, you've got an arrow facing to the left and you've got 250s. It means change lanes and reduce your speed to 50 miles an hour. Move to the left and reduce your speed to 50 miles an hour. So that arrow facing down is change lanes. They can give you the option of just the arrow and asking you what it means. It means change lanes when safe to do so. So be careful with the answers because sometimes they say change lanes immediately, we suggest it's not going to be safe. And then other option is change lanes when it's safe to do so. Remember the theory test is always about the safety factor. When are you allowed to stop on a motorway? So the question, let me just repeat that. When are you allowed to stop on the motorway? when you're seen to do so by traffic signal. So for example, um, you've got red X's across the lane above, across the lane above you, there's a, um, a gantry, it's called a gantry, and it's got red X's across every single lane. It means everybody must come to a stop. So yeah, when you signaled by traffic signals. Um, if you read the question, when are you allowed to stop on the motorway? Most peop people would be looking for when you've broken down, but the question is when are you allowed? You're only stopping in the motorway because you can't go anywhere because your car has broken down. So be very careful if they gave you that option within the answers. 
you only can legally stop on the motorway when you've been signalled to do so. You're travelling in the left-hand lane of a three-lane motorway. How should you react to traffic joining from a slip road? So the traffic is coming on to the motorway. You're already on it and the traffic is coming on. How should you react to that? And the answer is adjust your speed or change lanes if you could do so safely. Notice it's got safely in the answer. As I've said in my previous videos, if you're new here, if it's got safe, safety or safely in the answer, you have to shortlist it as a possible and then work out which one's the best one. Because it's got safely, it's the only one in there with the word safe in it. It's going to be that option. So you either adjust your speed, slow down, let the car come on safely. Or if you can change lanes to maintain your speed safely, then do that option as well. You're on a smart motorway. Now, if you didn't know what a smart motorway was, it's a motorway that has digital information for drivers. So it's got a lot of signage they can change to keep you up to date. That's why they call it smart because it's up to date information, or up to date digital information for drivers. So the question, you're on a smart motorway. What does it mean when a red cross is displayed above the hard shoulder? So it's so above the hard shoulder, it means you cannot and should not use it. So you should not travel in this lane. So if it's got a red X above the hard shoulder, you should not travel within that lane. You're on a smart motorway. What does it mean when the mandatory speed limit is displayed above the hard shoulder? Now, because it's a smart motorway, it's got 50 above the hard shoulder. What they've done is there's probably traffic congestion, three lanes. So what they've done is checked the cameras. There's nothing broken down in the hard shoulder. So they've decided to open up the hard shoulders. If there's three lanes, lots of traffic, they've opened up a fourth lane, i.e. the hard shoulder, but they reduced the speed limit down to 50. So it means you can use it. It's called a running lane. So let me just repeat that from the previous question. If it's got an X above the hard shoulder, it means you cannot use it. If it's got 50 above the hard shoulder, it means you can use it. But again, that will only be on a hard, um, on a smart motorway because they've checked it, they know it's clear, they know it's safe to use it. What help? What helps to reduce traffic bunching on the motorway? Again, this is more to do with um, smart motorways. Um, variable speed limits they can change the speed limits live while you're driving so they worked out there's lots of traffic ahead of you what they can do now is reduce your speed so it takes you longer to get to the back of the queue hopefully by the time you get there there is no queue to be worrying about so it's variable speed limits they can change the speed limits live while you are driving you're on a motorway what must you do if there's a red cross shown above every lane? This relates back to the previous question when I said the only time you can legally stop on the motorway is when you buy signals. So if it's got a cross above you, or sorry, across every lane, then everyone's going to come to a stop. I will add as well, because a lot of people say when this comes up in the classroom, but yeah, while well, it's stopping on the motorway, one that caused an accident, no. Because on the motorway, you can see at least a mile ahead of you, so you're going to see the signs um, nice and clearly so you're not stopping lastminute.com it's literally slowing down over a distance and that's another question that can come up what should you do more of on the motorway and it's look further ahead because you're traveling at faster distance and uh, faster speeds so look further ahead so you can plan your lane changes or stopping in this case um, well in hand so stop and wait literally is the answer How should you rejoin the motorway after a breakdown on the hard shoulder? You should join the motorway by build up your, building up your speed on the hard shoulder before looking for a safe gap. Again, note that it's got safe in the answer for a safe gap in the traffic. What a lot of people don't realise when you've broken down and you've got your car fixed, a lot of people try to just rejoin from there because they feel they can't drive in the hard shoulder. You can remember how fast a lorry um, can go on a motorway. You guys tell me the answer with that. 
it's 16 miles now. The last thing you want to do is do 10 to 15 miles now, try to join the motorway. Then you've got a lorry coming up behind you at 16 miles now. It's going to wipe you out. So what you do now is drive in the hard shell to build your speed up. I would get to about 60 because lorry can only do 60. So if anything, the gap stays the same. Um, so get up to about 60, 60 plus, and then obviously mirror signal, look for that safe gap as the answer gives you, and then you can join, rejoin the main carriageway, which is the left-hand lane. You're driving on a motorway. What does it mean if a car in front shows its hazard warning lights for a short time? Right, the meaning behind that is the traffic ahead is slowing or stopping suddenly. And the reason why sometimes cars put their hazard lights on is because on the motorway, it's in clear open space, especially this time of year now the clocks have gone forward, backwards. Can't even remember what happens, but it's springtime, basically summertime. When you use the brakes in broad daylight, sometimes it doesn't show up clearly and bright enough, especially on the motorway where you need that information nice and quick. So hazard warning lights are yellow or amber and it flashes. So that always stands out no matter what type of weather conditions you're at. But in broad daylight, brake lights don't always stand there. So sometimes people use a hazard lights as well as their brake lights. And that's the reason for that. What does the 25 mean on this motorway sign? That's your junction number or exit number. So it's junction 25 or exit 25. They can word it either way. But basically, if you was going to Nottingham, um, you're looking for junction 25 or exit 25. This sign, what should you do when you see this sign as you travel along the motorway? Take note, the other arrow was facing diagonally down to the left. This is straight and left. So this means leave a motorway at the next exit. Something's going on further beyond the next exit, so they're waiting to leave. So basically, the way that I teach this is that it's still, you've got a straight on it, and then it's going left. So keep going straight, but come off at the next exit is what you're looking for in that one. And there you have it. So that's the second part of the motorway questions where I call it obscure questions, not the obvious questions that come up on a regular basis. And if you don't see them, then obviously you won't know them. So as I said previously at the beginning of this, this is the last question of the week. So I won't be here for the next couple of Mondays. As I said, I'm gonna get my diary um, going because it is really busy at the moment and get Easter out of the way, and then I'm gonna be back doing a live 50 question mock test where I'm gonna take your questions and answers anything driving related, not just very driving, um, because I'm starting to do driving videos on the channel as well to help you guys pass as best I can. And I can only do that if you guys interact with me by giving me the questions, give me your problems. Don't feel it's too much hassle for me, it's not. It's a hassle keeping up with all of them, but I will get my do my best to get around to answering all of your questions, all of your problems. And that's why we'll be doing that 50 question live mock test every single Monday for you guys. But like I said, if you haven't subscribed, if you haven't had that hit that notification bell, do that. So I can, um, when I promote the live, it will come up in your feed. Otherwise, if you've got a theory test this week, I wish you the best of luck with that. Let me know how you got on in the comments. Um, otherwise, keep studying. Don't get discouraged. Let me know if you've got any issues in the comments below and catch the video that's coming out on Thursday. I believe it's vehicle and handling because some of you guys have asked for that video and that's also part of the Study With Me series. So have a good week.